Our next speaker is a Michigan-based employment and civil rights lawyer who increasingly finds himself defending employees in non-compute disputes. Please welcome David Blanchard. Forced non-compete agreements in Michigan. The, the employer that forces you to give up a control over your career path in the future in exchange for the job that's here and now, that piece of paper. It's unethical, it's immoral, it's un-American, but what's worse, it's really hurting Michigan. We, wherever I go in Michigan these days, it's almost universally acknowledged that we're trying to build a 21st century high-tech talent pool in Michigan. That means attracting talent here, retaining the talent that we have in Michigan, harvesting what we have here in what some one of the buzzwords is economic gardening. It's incredibly essential that we do this to build a 21st century economy. But against that backdrop, there's increasing evidence, increasing studies that show us that in fact these non-compete agreements that people are forced to sign, especially in the high-tech sector, are decreasing the mobility of talent. They make uh, states that enforce them less attractive for venture capital, less attractive for startup businesses, and their states that enforce them are increasingly less successful. Non-compete agreements in Michigan are holding our talent back behind the bars, and in other states where they're not enforced, uh, talented people get to move and get to be rewarded uh, for the, the, the value that they have. These are enforced sometimes in some sectors up to 50 percent of the, of the population uh, will face these and in biotech, pharmaceutical, high-tech industries, software developers across the board. So what is it? A non-compete agreement is a restrictive covenant in the old terms. It's a limitation on what you can do with your own skills and your own labor uh, when you're moving from one job to the next. It decreases mobility. The exact confines of it are going to be subject to language uh, in, the, in a contract. They're going to be confined in some geographic scope, some sector, and some definition of what is competitive. What they're not are non-solicit agreements, confidentiality agreements, or even goodwill agreements that business partners might have. Those are different things. Those can be protected in the law. They are protected in the law, but they can also be protected by contracts. But what the law does is non-competes, and using those non-competes is it drives up the cost of a transition for highly talented, highly skilled people in our state. I meet all the time with people that want to move on to another job that's a better fit for them. They want to start up a new business and have a great idea but they're deterred from the cost and the uncertainty of looking at a non-compete dispute from something they signed earlier. Uh, big firms, mostly they're worried about competitive advantage. They're really simply worried that their competitor is going to get better talent than them, and they're using non-competes in that way. Yes, they may be worried sometimes about trade secrets, but there are narrower protections and ways to protect those kinds of intellectual property. It's short-sighted. We're not able to build a large talent pool because of that. California doesn't do it that way. Washington doesn't do it that way. Those states don't enforce non-compete agreements at all. Other states, uh, like Oregon, uh, require that the employee sees that weeks in advance of taking a new job. You can think about it. Michigan deserves better. Michigan deserves to have mobility within the state. It deserves to have a talent pool that can measure up to any state in the country. So what can you do while well, the law is the way it is? We've got lots of creative people here tonight, maybe some business owners. You have to take control of your career path. Here's a few tips along the way. If you're in a job search, of course, the first thing you might think about is looking for employers that don't use these kinds of agreements. Looking for employers that are willing to limit them to what their legitimate interests really are. You can refuse to sign them, or you could at least ask up front before you take a job, accept a job offer, what are the limitations that you require of your employees? If you are going to sign them, then you should think about the value that you're giving up. Think about what that restriction costs you and put some value on that and negotiate. If you already signed, what you're going to do is you're going to have to build in to the business model uh, when you're thinking about a transition, when you're thinking about mobility. You're going to have to think about the cost of uncertainty and legal fees and things like that. If it is your company then you can do better. You can reject non-compete agreements. 
You can use real incentives and pay people what they're worth or give them a share of their innovation and their entrepreneurship. And you can embrace mobility as a good thing for Michigan's talent and a good way to build a better Michigan. Thank you. Thanks, David.